Hey guys, it's Keon, and today I'm going to be talking about Nate Diaz because recently he fought the last fight on his UFC contract. And although he did say he plans to return to the UFC one day, that may not happen with the amount of money he's going to make outside of the promotion. So right now, I want to cover his entire MMA career to answer the question, how good was Nate Diaz actually? Nate began his MMA career on October 21st, 2004 at the age of 19. His first opponent was Alejandro Garcia. And despite getting taken down and being on his back, Nate stayed busy with submission attempts. And eventually in the third, he locked up a triangle choke that forced Alejandro to tap. After this win, Nate moved up from lightweight to welterweight to fight Koji Oishi in Japan. And what a fight this was, as both men went back and forth on the feet, and although Nate had his moments, it was clear that the more experienced Koji was getting the better of him. And by the end, Koji won by unanimous decision, handing Nate his first defeat. Following this defeat, Nate went back down to lightweight to fight Tony Juarez on a strike force card. And after some back and forth action on the feet and on the ground, Nate got a hold of Tony's back and threw ground and pound that forced the ref to step in. At WEC 20, Nate fought Gilbert Rael, and once again, Nate finished his opponent by getting a hold of his back and flattening him out, which led to the TKO finish in the first round. At WEC 21, he fought Joe Hurley. Nate controlled most of the action on the ground before locking up a triangle choke in round 2 that forced a tap. After defeating Dennis Davis to become the inaugural WC lightweight champion, Nate fought Hermes Franca at WEC 24. And after a competitive back and forth fight, Hermes locked up an armbar in round 2 that forced Nate to tap. After going 5-2, and two, Nate became a contestant on the 5th season of The Ultimate Fighter. And he looked very good in the house as he defeated Rob Emerson in the elimination round by rear naked choke. And then in the semi-finals, he defeated Corey Hill with a triangle choke. This led to a matchup with Gray Maynard in the semi-finals. And although Gray had his moments, Nate also did as well. And this led to a guillotine choke in round 2 that forced Gray to tap. So with these 3 wins, Nate advanced to the Ultimate Fighter finale where he fought Manvel Gamburian. And despite Manvel looking very good in round 1, early in round 2 he shot for a takedown and dislocated his shoulder which forced the ref to step in, making Nate the Ultimate Fighter 5 lightweight tournament winner. 3 months later, Nate fought Junior at Sun Cell. And despite Junior looking competitive early on, he got dropped by punches which led to a guillotine choke that forced him to tap. After this win, Nate fought Alvin Robertson. After back and forth action on the ground, Nate locked up a triangle choke off his back which forced Alvin to tap. Two and a half months later, Nate fought Kurt Pellegrino. And once again, after a competitive effort from his opponent, Nate locked up a triangle choke that forced Kurt to tap. Following this win, he fought Josh Neer. And this was a back and forth fight both on the feet and on the ground, but ultimately, I saw rounds one and three go to Nate. And I feel like even Josh knew that as well, so when a judge scored the fight for him, he himself was shocked. But ultimately, Nate won by split decision. At UFC 94, he fought Clay Guida. And although Nate was finding a lot of success on the feet, Clay was doing a good job in neutralizing that by bringing the fight down and maintaining top control. It was a close fight, but by the end, Clay won by split decision. After this defeat, Nate fought Joe Stevenson. This was a very competitive fight, both on the feet and on the ground. But ultimately, Joe was controlling most of the action with his wrestling and grappling. And by the end, he won by unanimous decision. Three months later, Nate fought Melvin Gillard. And although Melvin connected with some nice shots in this fight, by the end, Nate locked up a guillotine choke in round two that forced Melvin to tap. Four months later, Later, Nate fought Gray Maynard for a second time. Most of the action took place on the feet for this fight, but Gray also had moments with his wrestling. And although Nate was connecting with some nice shots, so did Gray. It was a very close fight, but ultimately, Gray won by split decision. At UFC 111, Nate moved back up to welterweight to fight Rory Markham. And he looked very good in his 170 debut with the UFC, as he destroyed Rory on the feet early on. And after Rory went down, Nate connected with more ground and pound, which eventually forced Ref to step in. At UFC 118, Nate fought Marcus Davis. And although Nate was controlling the action for most of this fight, both on the feet and on the ground, I gotta give credit to Marcus for staying in there and taking all this damage. But ultimately, it was too much, and in the final minute of the fight, Nate locked up a guillotine which put Marcus to sleep. At UFC 125, Nate fought Dong Young Kim. And for most of the fight, Nate was getting taken down and controlled on the ground. So by the end, Dong won by unanimous decision. At UFC 129, Nate fought Rory McDonald. Nate, who was clearly the smaller fighter got ragdolled by Rory in this fight and ultimately this led to Rory winning by unanimous decision. So after these two defeats at welterweight, Nate went back down to lightweight to fight Takanori Gomi. And Nate looked very good as he was tagging Takanori on the feet which led to the action going down to the ground. This led to an armbar which forced Takanori to tap. 
at UFC 141, Nate fought Donald Cerrone. And despite Donald being the favorite in this fight, Nate absolutely outclassed him on the feet. Although Donald had his moments, Nate's pressure was way too much for him. So by the end, Nate won by unanimous decision. Following this win, he fought Jim Miller. And this was a prime Jim Miller, who was very good, but ultimately, he was unable to handle Nate's pressure on the feet. This led to him getting picked apart and eventually, Nate locked up a guillotine choke, which forced the tap. This was a very impressive run from Nate and this led to him fighting for the UFC lightweight championship. His opponent was champion Benson Henderson. And unfortunately for Nate, although he showed a lot of toughness in this fight, Benson was controlling most of the action with his wrestling. So by the end, he won by unanimous decision. Following this title defeat, Nate fought Josh Thompson. And Josh put on a picture-perfect performance as he avoided most of Nate's offense. This led to him connecting with many shots of his own and eventually, he connected with a head kick that rocked Nate. And after Nate went down, Josh threw ground and pound which forced the ref to step in. Handing Nate his first defeat by TKO. He came back seven months later to fight Gray Maynard for a third time. And although Gray was competitive early on, once he got clipped, he ate a bunch of shots, which eventually forced the ref to step in. Nate came back a year later to fight Rafael Dos Anjos. And for the first and only time in Nate's career, he missed weight. So the fight happened at a catch weight of 160.5 pounds. And once again, despite the toughness being displayed by Nate, Rafael absolutely dominated him, especially with the leg kicks. So by the end, Rafael won by unanimous decision. After another year-long layoff, Nate came back and fought Michael Johnson. And Nate looked amazing in this fight as he outstruck Michael for the entire fight. This led to the unanimous decision win, and afterwards in his post-fight interview, he called out UFC featherweight champion Conor McGregor, saying that Conor was taking everything that he worked for. And this created a storyline that eventually led to the two fighting at UFC 196 after Conor's opponent, Rafael Dos Anjos, pulled out. And with Nate only having 11 days notice, the UFC and Conor decided to have the fight go down at welterweight. And Conor looked good early on, as he was firing at a high pace and connecting with a lot of shots. But Nate was able to eat these and return with some of his own. And although Connor was finding success, he was beginning to tire as he was unable to keep up with Nate's pace. So in round two, Nate began to take control as he connected with some shots on the feet that rocked Connor. This forced a desperation takedown from him, but Nate was able to stuff it and get a hold of his back, which led to a rear naked choke that forced Connor to tap. This win was absolutely huge considering that Connor was at his absolute peak at at this point. And because of this win, Nate became one of the UFC's biggest stars. So the obvious move was to make the immediate rematch. And that went down at UFC 202, which at the time broke the record for most pay-per-view buys. But compared to the first fight, this one went all five rounds and it was very competitive. Connor was finding a lot of success with this striking, especially early on. And this led to Nate getting dropped a couple of times. But as time passed, Nate began to gain more momentum. And at times, Connor looked to be in serious trouble. It became a war and both men truly went all out in this one. And although some believe that Nate should have been awarded with the win that night, it was Connor who was awarded with the majority decision. After this, Nate was out for three years before coming back at UFC 241 where he fought Anthony Pettis. And this was a fun action-packed fight which saw both men have their moments but ultimately it was Nate who was controlling most of the action and by the end he won by unanimous decision. In his post-fight interview, Nate called out Jorge Masvidal to have a fight which will decide who is the baddest motherfucker. And with Jorge being a huge star at this point as well, the UFC decided to make that fight as a headliner for UFC 244. They even made the BMF belt for this fight. That's how huge it was. But ultimately, it was Jorge who was controlling most of the action early on in this fight as he was finding more success with his striking. And credit to Nate, he ate a lot of shots, but ultimately, he was unable to get a lot of offense going. Until the third round where it seemed like he was slowly gaining momentum. But with a huge cut opened... On Nate's eyebrow, the doctor decided to stop the fight going into the fourth. Nate was out for a year and a half before coming back at UFC 263 where he fought Leon Edwards. And for most of this fight, Leon was controlling the action on the feet. Nate was unable to get much going until the final minute of the fight when he connected with a huge left hand that rocked Leon. This led to more shots from Nate and the fight looked very close to ending. And had it ended, it wouldn't have only been a huge win for Nate, but also a massive upset, especially with how the fight was going. 
fighting. But Leon was able to survive and by the end, he won by unanimous decision. On September 10th, 2022, Nate came back at UFC 279 to fight Tony Ferguson and this was the last fight on his contract. And originally, that last fight was supposed to be against Hamza Chimaev, but after Hamza missed weight, the entire card got shifted and luckily we had Nate fight Tony in the main event. And what an odd fight this was. Tony was attacking Nate's leg quite a bit in this fight and some thought that Tony was winning because of it. But Nate was also finding success as he was pressing forward with punches and Tony was eating some of these shots. Now I say it was weird because there were moments where we had Nate visibly resting. It was very strange at times but ultimately Nate was able to lock up a guillotine in round four which forced Tony to tap. And like I said this was Nate's last fight on his contract with the UFC. And with him being the star that he is he's gonna have so many options ahead of him. And best of all he's going to get paid very well for all this. And it's exciting to see for Nate especially with him coming off a win and overall just seeing his career go through the highs and lows. For him to be at this point is very well deserved and I'm excited to see what's next for him. So after going 21 and 13 how good was Nate Diaz actually? Nate is the ultimate fighter. No he was not the perfect fighter. At times he made mistakes and this got him into a lot of trouble but that didn't matter for him because he was extremely tough not only physically but mentally. Even when he was in trouble in a fight he did not let it deter him. I mean after all he was only finished once by strikes in his career and even then he wasn't out cold. And when it comes to submissions he was only finished once and that defeat was very early into his career. And a lot of this toughness is due to Nate's amazing cardio. His pressure both on the feet and on the ground was too much for many of his opponents. He was a volume striker and this led to some nice combos on the feet. Yes, they may not have been the hardest shots for some, but that constant pressure ended up getting many of his opponents very tired. And that pressure continued in the clinch where he would grab a hold of his opponents and brutalize them with an array of shots. And the same could be said with his grappling. His jiu-jitsu was amazing. In fact, it was so good that he wasn't afraid to pull guard and try to lock up a submission off his back. And also we can't forget about his ground and pound which was merciless. Once he get his opponents back and flatten them out, those shots from above looked terrifying. But as good as he was in fighting, I would say at times he was a slow starter, especially against tougher competition. And because of this, there were many times where Nate was losing fights early on, but would begin to gain momentum near the end of it. But by that point, it was too late. So a huge narrative that developed for his career was that he ran out of time in many of his fights, hence why he was more favorable in five rounders. But aside from running out of time, he also had the disadvantage when he didn't have the size advantage, especially when he was at welterweight many of his opponents were as big or bigger than him and that was bad for Nate because his reach was a huge factor for his success and that's why I always thought he was best at lightweight compared to welterweight but another time he faced troubles was when he'd go up against a strong wrestler or a stronger grappler if his opponent was able to take him down and avoid his ground and pound and submission threats then they'd basically win the fight and this leads to another issue with Nate never evolving his game yes he improved on certain aspects Aspects, especially his striking but overall he was always the same fighter which was someone who was down to slug it out on the feet and also grapple to find the submission or ground and pound finish he never switched up his game plan he always fought the same way and in a way that hurt his career in terms of reaching the top but at the same time Nate fighting like this is the reason why we love him he fought to entertain, hence why he was getting so much love after his defeat to Leon Edwards, and hence why he put his hands up after it was all done. It seemed like he didn't care about the win or loss because he truly cared more about entertaining the fans. And because of this, he created an image for himself, and that was the ultimate fighter, the BMF. And you could say, yes, there were some OG BMFs from before like Nick Diaz and Robbie Lawler, or even Jorge Masvidal who won the BMF title, but Nate was the guy who really pushed that image to the forefront. And it was an image that many MMA fans identified as what a fighter is and what they do. And that's someone who isn't afraid to fight. Win or lose, they're gonna go all out. And that's what Nate did every fight. And when you add in his personality and where he wasn't afraid to speak his mind both inside and outside of the cage, you have a fighter that many people respected because he was being real. And many gravitate towards someone who's genuine like that. And Nate was peaked 
genuine, whether that affected him or not. And because of all this, he created an identity for himself in MMA. Because for years, he was in his brother's shadow. People looked at him as Nick Diaz's brother. And at a point, it seemed like that's all it was going to be. Nick Diaz's brother, UFC veteran. But Nate kept on going and ultimately, he struck gold by defeating Connor. And in a way, you can say, not only did he leave Nick's shadows, but he also probably had an even bigger career than him in terms of attention. Nate became the face of the UFC and MMA as a whole for many people. He's a huge reason why many began watching the UFC. Yes, he wasn't the perfect fighter, but he was the ultimate fighter. And that transcended with many. And that's why I would give his MMA career a 9 out of 10. But what do you think? How good was Nate Diaz actually? And what was your favorite moment from his career? But that's a lot for now, so I'll see you in my next one.